Hello and welcome to our episode on multiplying polynomials. Hopefully you've had a chance to enjoy the previous episode, so you're feeling pretty comfortable with your understanding of polynomials so far. Here's a quick recap. Polynomials are made up of terms. Terms are identified as having a number part, or coefficient, and a variable part. A variable part raised to the zeroth power leaves just a number of known value, we call a constant. In a polynomial, terms are joined by addition or subtraction. Although poly means many, polynomials with 1 to 3 terms can be named using the prefixes mono, bi, or tri. The term with the highest exponent value determines the degree of the polynomial. In this example, we have a fifth degree trinomial. In standard form describes the way we order the terms from highest degree to lowest. The first term is referred to as the leading term. We also learn to identify like terms. We can combine terms with the exact same variable parts by combining their coefficients to simplify expressions. To add polynomials, we look for like terms from two or more polynomials and combine their coefficients and constants. Polynomials can be subtracted by identifying like terms as well. We commonly use the distributive property to essentially convert a subtraction question into an addition one. Along the way, we've been encouraging deeper understanding and problem solving to ensure that your learning is meaningful and long term. At this point, we'll be focusing on multiplying a monomial. This is really an extension of what we've learned about distribution in our last segment. When multiplying the monomial a times the trinomial x plus y plus z, we recognize that the a must be multiplied with each term grouped by the brackets. In fact, a is actually a factor of the group, similar to what you learned in arithmetic when using integers. As soon as you multiply a number by anything, it becomes a factor. This is true for algebra as well. When we distribute the a, we get the trinomial expression ax plus ay plus az. The value hasn't changed and the two expressions are actually equivalent. Since the a is common to each term now, it could be factored out of the expression and we were right back where we started. Here's another simple expression to try. When we distribute the x, we could show it as x times x times x, negative 4x times x, and 3x. We would write this, of course, as x to the third minus 4x squared plus 3x. All the terms are unique, as they have all been altered by the same factor, so there's no simplifying to do. Beyond the really simple ones, you might see more complex combinations. Just make sure you're using your rules for multiplying variables and signs properly. For this example, we multiply the coefficients with opposite signs and we get negative 8. And add the powers of the x's to get x to the fifth. The y remains unchanged. And negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. And the x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. We'll enlist the use of algebra tiles to get a quick demonstration of something you'll see down the road. But it's good to get a glimpse into where we'll take this and to bring some of our learning together. Here are two simple binomials being multiplied together. We'll put the x plus 2 across the top and the 2x plus 1 on the vertical axis. We can use some grid lines to guide us as to what terms end up in the solution. When we start distributing the leading term of our first binomial, we get 2x times x, which is 2x squared. Then 2x times 2 gives us 4x's. And we do the same with the constant term. So 1 times x is x, which of course means we now have a total of 5 x's. And finally, 1 times 2 is 2. The area inside the grid lines of our tiles confirms this. Let's do one more example with a negative in one of the binomials. 3x minus 1 on the horizontal and 2x plus 2 on the vertical. Add our grid lines to guide the solution, and we'll start distributing. 
2x times 3x for a total of 6x squared. 2x times negative 1 gives us negative 2x's. 2 times 3x gives us 6x's. And 2 times negative 1 gives us negative 2. Since we have negative and positive x's, we can match them as zero pairs, as they are, of course, like terms. And we are left with positive 4x. Again, our tile solution and distribution solution are consistent. Really, you could multiply any combination of polynomials together. Even though they get quite complex, the concept is relatively simple. Every term in each polynomial must be multiplied together. We keep trying to connect to previous knowledge to help see a continuation of learning. We can do this once again with multiplication. Multiplying more challenging integers would lead you to something like this. The 2 would, of course, be multiplied by each of the place values. Similar to a term being distributed to each of the terms it is being multiplied by. Continue to dig deep into your understanding. And look for ways to challenge yourself with new opportunities to grow. We will continue with dividing polynomials in the next section.